Notice that this is the enthalpy change, so this is delta H, and notice the unit is a kilojoule per mole. The kilojoule is the Q part, and the per mole is that N part we talked about earlier, just if you wanted to kind of draw, draw some ideas together. What is the molar heat of the reaction? It just is saying repeat it like that. So write the problem representing the energy displayed as part of the reaction. Notice it's negative, so it needs to be a product. If you knew the phases, you would definitely include the phases in this. How much heat is produced? And you want to say 65.2 kilojoules is what's produced. So how much heat is produced in kilojoules, so this is what they're wanting us to find is kilojoules, and they're giving us 500 grams, and notice that it would be grams per mole it would not be a good thing to start with. So kilojoules equals 500.0 grams, and then we have 56.08 grams in one mole. And what is this moles of? This is CAO. We need to make sure we do not drop our labels. So now we're going to go from moles of CaO into kilojoules. So notice, is it balanced? Looks like the reaction is balanced. And so in one mole, we have 65.2 kilojoules. When you do this math, you're going to get 581.3 kilojoules. Now we're going to turn the problem around and say when you have 32.6 kilojoules produced and they want to know how much calcium oxide is made. So we're going to take 32.6 kilojoules and then we're going to say we need to go from kilojoules to moles and we know what we're going to go to because it says in the problem calcium oxide. Then we're going to go from moles of calcium oxide into grams, because it wants the answer in grams, grams, calcium oxide. This is the one in one mole. We have this much kilojoules produced. And then right here appears where we were given the molar mass, 56.08. Notice our units cancel. So when we do the math, we get 28.0. Notice sig figs. People get antsy about sig figs. So in this problem, it started with one, two, three. Most of the time, that one is going to be your key. You should do a quick few checks. The 65.2 has three sig figs, and the 56.08 has four sig figs. So your final answer, the 28.0, should have three sig figs. 1.42 grams of iron. So it might be helpful for this problem to write out the reaction. That's supposed to be grams per mole. Balance the reaction and determine how many moles of iron 2 chloride, that's why I knew that I only needed two chlorines, iron 2 chloride, are produced. So notice that I have a number here, 1.42, and I have a number here. The springing flashbacks of chapter seven. That's Cl2, by the way, because it's diatomic. 55.85 grams in one mole. And this is iron, iron. And then we're going from moles of iron to, let's see, oh, it just wants to know moles of iron chloride. So when we look at that reaction, it is balanced. So this is one to one. 70.91 grams of chlorine in one mole of chlorine. And then one mole of chlorine, we have moles of iron chloride again. Every time you do a reaction and you're looking at your products, you cross out the one that's big because it's not real. Well, it's your theoretical. That's your theoretical amount. This is your limiting and this is your excess. In part B, we have a number and it's 338 kilojoules. 
and part B is the same equation as part A. It's this Fe solid plus Cl2 gas goes to FeCl2. And what we're know now is that we know the delta H is negative 338 kilojoules. And I just want to pause and just comment on this. This number right here, this 338, and I can put it up here too because, I mean, it's the same, right? This number is the energy for the lowest mole ratio of this reaction. But it's whole numbers. Like we aren't getting into halves or quarters. It's whole numbers. So it's for this, this, and this. That's what that number is. And so what we're saying is that, easily enough, this is the enthalpy. How much energy is produced in part A? The only number that we have to go with, because it says in part A, is this number. This is the number that we figured out. So what we're going to say is that in 0 0.025 four moles and who's this moles of FeCl2 I'm going to show you the slightly longer way and then I'm going to erase it because it's not conventional but this helps people understand this number and why it doesn't have a per mole sign so in that many moles of FeCl2 I have in one reaction and then in one Again, that's the whole mole, lowest mole ratio reaction. It's producing, because it's using that producing sign, it's just wanting the quantity, not whether it's in or out. And, and by the way, I, I have to end up with a positive number because you can't have a negative amount of moles or grams. The only thing you can have negative amounts of so far is energy. So then I can say that I have in one mole, in one reaction. Now, this isn't conventional. A lot of people skip this step. It's not like it's in your book, but I was just trying to show you this is like for just the lowest ratio whole number reaction. Now, I'm not supposed to show it to you this way. So I'm skipping out the reaction part, and I'm just putting the 338 right here, which we had already talked about, that you can go straight from 338 to each of the moles, right? And that makes my unit go away also. But I'm just trying to help people maybe see things a little deeper or a little bit differently. When you do that math, you're going to get 8.58 kilojoules produced. And as a note, you should expect a number less quite a bit than this because this was for the one mole reaction. And uh, you knew you had way less than one mole, right? So you should... You can, even on a multiple choice test, you can make like some good guesses. So we're going to look at this third section, this part C. Notice the units on this was supposed to be a kilojoule. So we don't know, I, I know earlier we did use it. We're pretending we don't know the delta H for this reaction. If you read these really carefully, I have two units that are tied together, but they're not right beside each other. It's saying that this many grams has been produced from this much heat. So I know not only that I have 126.75 grams in a mole, I also know that I have 8.55 kilojoules in 3.22 grams. Can you see how they're tied together? That many produce this much heat. Those two numbers are tied together. That's why this is kind of a tricky problem. It doesn't pop up that much, but I just wanted you to be able to see an example of it. So if I have everything all stuck together, well, where do I start? Because you need to start with something that has one unit. And you want to remember that you want to get rid of your kilojoules. So here's a way to make something start that has one unit. You need the delta H for one of these reactions. Like it's the lowest mole ratio reaction. So that's actually what I'm going to use. And this isn't conventional, but this often helps people see it. So in one reaction... And then I'm going to say, in one reaction, how many moles of this FeCl2? These are both related to the FeCl2 and the FeCl2. How many moles of FeCl2 do I have? One. In one reaction, I have one mole of FeCl2. 
Now I'm going to get rid of my moles of FeCl2 and turn them into grams just using the molar mass. So 126.75 grams in one mole. And then remember I have this right here of these two numbers tied together. So then I can say that in 3.22 grams of FeCl2, I have 8.55 kilojoules. Now if you check the units on this, you end up with 8.55 kilojoules. And that's how you figure out for one reaction what the delta H value is.